If you're having numbness or tingling or even shooting pain that goes from the neck and into the hand or the arm, this episode's for you. Hey, it's Dr. Josh. Today's episode, we're going to cover nerve pain that shoots down into the arm. Of course, we know that this can lead to numbness, tingling, burning, shooting, and potentially even weakness. So we're gonna show you a few things that are going to help you regarding this nerve pain. First, it's really important to note that almost all nerve pain involves some form of the neck. So if you just do some myofascial release or anything that's going to help the numbness and tingling down into the arm, that may be really beneficial, but you really need to address the neck and clear up some problems. More specifically, we're going to talk about nerve flossing. And first, I'm gonna to talk to you about what nerve flossing is. So basically, nerve flossing is a way of mobilizing or nerve gliding is a way of gliding the nerve through its path. If you think about a nerve, like as if it's this right here and it goes around my neck and it comes into my arm, a lot of that distribution that people have is that numbness and tingling that goes down into this area. So if this nerve is either caught up here or caught up here or maybe even both, what we wanna do is kinda floss that nerve through its course. And what happens is that sometimes when it's inflamed, it can get stuck. Maybe you have some scarring, some soft tissue adhesions, or maybe there's just a lot of inflammation in or around that nerve. What we can cause is some friction that goes through this area. It can mostly get gunked up here, but it can also get gunked up into that arm and hand, and that can cause some numbness and tingling. So basically nerve glides, nerve flossing, or nerve sliding allows that sliding for that nerve to go back and forth so that it can ease that friction. Before you even get started with nerve flossing or nerve glides, it's really important that these nerve glides can actually make your symptoms worse. So before you get started, it's really important to note that if you are approaching symptoms, you're increasing your symptoms, you really need to take a step back and make sure that this doesn't happen. It's really easy to trigger symptoms and anything that triggers increase in symptoms, we do not want, of course, the whole purpose of you doing these exercises or doing therapy is to reduce your symptoms and get better. So if anything increases it, just hold off, maybe go less, don't open up all the way, and we're gonna show you some modifications that you can do. A big mistake a lot of people do and that you'll see on the internet is how people nerve floss. So what they'll do is they'll do a, an extension all the way. So you can see there's a lot of tension in this band here. And if I bend my head away, we're actually doing this. We're pulling this direction and we're pulling this direction. And that can cause a lot of irritation here, 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 or down into that chain. So what we want to do in terms of nerve flossing is we want to extend one area. So we see some stretching going this direction and we see some relaxation going here, right? So that means we can tug on that nerve a little bit further and then that'll allow it to slide. Then we can put some slack in that nerve so you see a lot of slack here and then we can add some tension going that direction. So basically it's a way of pushing and pulling and pulling and pushing using mechanics of that area within the neck and the arm. Of course, the more we extend or bend that elbow that can increase or decrease tension. And of course, the more we move the shoulder up or down or depress it or bring it forward or backwards will have a big determinant on how much tension we put in that area. Again, going back, if you have any increase in symptoms, it's very easy to do that. So make sure you take a step back, less is more before you start this type of mobilization. To start the median nerve glide, we're gonna notice that most people are having carpal tunnel symptoms. Maybe they're having hand and finger pain like right through these three digits that's typically the median nerve, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to show you, as we extend that hand, we're gonna increase the tension. So again, the higher up your arm is and the more straight it is, the harder it's going to be. So if you want a little bit of a bend in there or you wanna bring that shoulder down a little bit, that'll ease some tension within that nerve. So you can see what's happening here. This is maximum tension, a little bit of slack. So if, don't feel like you need to bring your arm all the way up even though I'm doing that in this position here. And then also bringing that shoulder back and down. So if you see that, that's going to be a big factor here. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to shoot the spider web. We're going to extend the wrist and we're gonna point the head in that direction. So we're putting slack into my neck here, but we're tensioning into the arm here. 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to bend and pull this direction back and we're going to extend that way. And then we're gonna go back and forth. And this is how you would do the median nerve to get a lot of relief. You can do about three sets of three to start, three sets of four, three sets of five, and you can increase all the way up to three sets of maybe eight or 10. I highly recommend when you first start up any of these nerve glides that you start with like three sets of three, take a minute or two off, see how that feels. Because again, if it increases symptoms, which it may, you need to back off and maybe do less. We don't necessarily recommend doing this right off the bat, but it can be a very, very good protocol for you. To get the radial nerve, which is typically pain or numbness that comes down right around here and it comes up to the top of this part of the arm, into the thumb, maybe the first dig or second digit, and maybe even a little bit of the third. Sometimes people will say that it's on the back here or into the thumb and first finger and second finger here. So this is what you would no normally look like. That kind of looks a little bit more like this positioning here. So what we wanna do is to add maximum tension, what we'll do is we'll bring the thumb under and we'll kind of curl like this. Again, bring the thumb under and then curl the fingers over, okay? And then from this position, I like to ask for a little tip, okay? So you see my hand and my thumb is up here, right? Just like this, just like this, okay? What we want to do is we wanna curl that under and then go like this. So what we'll do here is we'll tip our head towards, again, putting slack into the neck here and then tensioning that nerve all the way down this direction. And then what you can do is add some extension back up and then laterally bend away. Laterally bend into, putting slack into the neck here and then tension into the arm that direction. Again, to slack this nerve here, you want to extend the digits, extend the wrist here and then potentially flex the elbow here. So again, you're putting slack from here or tension from here to slack, and then you're pulling away. It's very important that you understand the nuances and the small finer details, because I have seen people pull at both ends and cause increase in symptoms, and that could set you back days, if not weeks from your therapy. One of the more tricky ones that we're going to also work on is the ulnar nerve. Now the ulnar nerve anatomy is a little bit different. And a lot of patients will feel pain into the middle bottom part of this arm, that funny bone area, and it'll radiate down into this area. And they will mostly have pain and numbness into these first or second digits. That's really important because a lot of people on the internet will see these people doing the circles. I don't have the mobility for that. A lot of people don't. And you may not even have the mobility due to that tension or that irritation that you're feeling. So if you don't have it, don't do it. But you're gonna end up in this kind of waiter's type of position. Again, the higher that elbow goes, the more extension of the wrist you have, the more flexion of that elbow you have, the more intense the stretch is going to be. The anatomy of that elbow and that ulnar nerve right here is right like this. So when we do this, this is the max tension right here. Okay, so what we will do is we'll put this in max tension around the elbow. We're going to bend in because we're slacking at the neck and then we're tensioning here, right? So kind of like holding the tray and then listening to the tray. And then you can extend. So this is what it'll look like. Here. And extend and then rotate away a little bit. So you're going to pull on the neck, the neck is pulling it this direction, but you're slacking it here as much as you can within the ulnar group. Again, this is called nerve flossing of the ulnar nerve, and this is a series of how you can do it within all the other nerves. It's really important that you may have multiple distributions. You may need to clear up some of the inflammation or pain within the neck, the coracopectoral tunnel, the arm, the forearm, things like that. There's a lot of different areas that this nerve can get gunked up and stuck, and it could really reduce its mobility. So this is called neuromobilization, nerve slides, nerve glides, or nerve flossing, all of those terminologies are exactly the same, but it's basically about taking the concept of sliding that nerve 
through its course so that you can really alleviate some of the tension. I really wanna stress this again and again and again because I have seen this happen over and over and please don't make this mistake. If you feel an increase in symptoms, please back down, modify, modify, modify. It's really best to do this three sets of three reps, full ranges of motion as best you can, and it's always best to do less and then start easing into it more. So if you found this video helpful and you found that this is helping with your nerve pain, please let me know, like, and share this. I would really greatly appreciate that. And I'll see you guys for the next episode.